Haley Hewitt is a harp player who comes from Quincy, Massachusetts and plays her original music and is also interested in performing traditional music from around the world. She has studied harp in Scotland for a master's degree student, as a master's degree student in the Scottish Music Department of the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland and came back to the United States to pursue her career in playing harp and teaching and writing music on the harp. And back in the United States, she founded the Celtic Harp Department at the Neighborhood Music School in Connecticut Harp Circle. And her dream is to form a program for the advanced study of the lever harp in the United States. And Haley has a CD of music in collaboration with English composer Michael O'Sullivan. And she currently is working on a recording of her own original compositions as well and here to perform some of her own music today is Haley Hewitt. Please give her a warm welcome up here to her heart. When first to this country I came as a stranger I placed my affection on a maiden She was young She being young and tender Her waist small and slender Kind affection has made her To be my overthrow On the banks of Ban Water where first I beheld her She appeared like a goddess Or like some Grecian queen Her eyes shone like diamonds Her hair bright and golden Her cheeks like two roses Or like blood drops on snow It was her cruel parents I must blame for this variance For I am of poor and a fallow degree But I'll do my endeavors For to win my love's favor Although she has come from a rich family On a maiden, twas young She being young and tender Her waist small and slender Kind affection has made her To be my overthrow very much. So I'm Haley, and this is my harp Gwen. <laughs> I've had her since I was eight years old, um, so we're best buds. <laughs> um, so next I'll share with you a, um, a lovely set of tunes that I picked up while I was in Scotland. Um, hope you don't mind an instrumental. Um, the first is a waltz written by my dear friend Gemma Telfer, 
Um, I think at this point she's about 20 years old, but at the time I think she was 17. Um, so she's quite a tunesmith. I'm very proud of her. Uh, it's called Ennis Hour, and then I'll go into a jig called Taking the Tent Down. <coughs> in Scotland, I was very lucky to live with a um, very talented composer from Ireland by the name of Michael O'Sullivan. Um, we became great friends, and I asked him to write a piece for me, and he did. And I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. Um, we recorded it, um, we made a CD, we made a book of sheet music for other harp players to learn it, and we made a music video felt like a rock star at that point. <laughs> um, so it's 20 minutes long, so I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'll play one movement um, of the six. Uh, this one is called The Path to Glen Leem. Each of the movements tries to capture a location or a memory associated with the island of Valencia, which is off the west coast of, of um, Ireland. And um, 
on Valencia. There are many beautiful um, scenes, but the path to Glen Leem goes from the lightkeeper's house through the woods along the coast, and it's very dark. And um, then you go to the, um, the path, which goes down to Glen Leem House, which is this beautiful large estate where the Lord Carey used to live. Um, and during the potato famine, he opened his home as a soup kitchen to the peasants from the mainland so they could come over and be fed. Um, legend has it that not everyone was able to make it along the path to Glen Leem, and their ghosts still walk that path. <coughs> Thank you very much. Whew. That one always puts me in chills. Um, <laughs> so uh, I have a habit of asking people I live with to write for me. Um, now I live with my wonderful boyfriend. His name is Tim Pettis, and he's a poet. So um, I asked him to write some lyrics for me. Um, back in January, when we were all snowed in, we were also snowed in. And uh, we got to collaborating on some songwriting. So this is one of those songs that we came up with. Um, it's about a girl who thinks she has seasonal affective disorder, but what she really has is a lousy boyfriend. <laughs> six feet of snow not that you could know but it must be why i'm feeling so low but i won't feel down when the sun comes around not that you could know cause it's easy to hide things from you but it's not the cause at all when i see you having called and when i feel dejected it's disorder i'm affected by Snow is in the sky But soon when spring is flowing Then I feel the roots growing under me Stable as a tree Although you're the one who's far away You're the one who's far away It's only winter Get into me I 
just want someone to hold But I'll brighten up now, the snow's not coming down Not that you could know, but, but it makes me think of you Cause it's these chemicals in my brain Not that we haven't talked in days And when I feel dejected, it's the sort of I'm affected by To teach me how to medicate To drive away the sadness from the storm After I've been hearing rumors Though I know it's only rumors That you've been keeping warm Yes, and when I feel dejected It's disorder I'm affected by given the sign that I have time for one more song. Um, I think I'll do uh, another uplifting one. This one's about drinking your sorrows away. <laughs> I, um, I think it's funny that I do this song because all my friends know I, um, I'm never drunk and I'm always sober. I'm always drunk and I'm seldom sober A constant roving from town to town But what I'm old now, my sporting's over So mal your store, won't you lay me down? Just lay my head on a keg of brandy It is my fancy, I do declare For while I'm drinking, I'm always thinking On lovely Molly from the county Clare, the ripest apples, the soonest rotten, and the warmest love is the soonest cold. A young man's fancy is soon forgotten, so beware, young maids, and don't make so bold. Just lay my head on a keg of brandy, it is my fancy, I do declare. For while I'm drinking, I'm always thinking on lovely Molly from the County Clare. Tis youth and folly make young men merry and makes them tarry along the day. What can't be cured, love, must be endured, love. So farewell, darling, I'm going away. Just lay my head on a keg of brandy, it is my fancy, I do declare. For while I'm drinking, I'm always thinking on lovely Molly from the County Clare. Just lay my head a keg of brandy, it is my fancy, I do declare. For while I'm drinking, I'm always thinking on lovely Molly from the County Clare. <laughs> Thank you.
Does anybody have any questions? We could take about two at this point. Uh, I mean, for any questions uh, with the harp, the songs, Haley. Oh, we got one in back. Yes. Is your lovely boyfriend jealous of your relationship with your harp? <laughs> <laughs> he knows. <laughs> He's fine with it. <laughs> At least I hope so. Yes. Uh, uh, so where do your ideas come from for your song? Um, I tend to play the music that I like. So if I find something I really like, I'll learn it and see what I can add to it. Um, the songs that Tim writes, he usually comes up with the idea. Or um, the, the um, Getting to Me song, I said, hey, wouldn't it be funny if we wrote a song about a girl who just has a horrible boyfriend? But <laughs> yeah. Um, and he liked the idea enough that he wrote lyrics for me. But most of the time, it's his idea. And then I try my best to set um, the music to suit the, the tone of the words. Um, I haven't yet gotten up the guts to write my own lyrics. That might happen someday, but not today. <laughs> I don't have the same guts you guys do. <laughs> um, oh, there's one over there, yes? I was just wondering, how much does the harp weigh to carry around? Uh, this is a Dusty Strings 36 <coughs> strung um, neo Celtic folk harp. Um, it's about 35 pounds, and in its case, it's about 40. Um, I don't really feel it anymore because I've been carrying it around since I got it. Um, it kind of feels like another part of me at this point. So, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really feel that heavy anymore. So, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Yesterday, on the premier beach of my youth, a whale was washed ashore. He loitered till the life sank from his oversized eyes. He was too much for land. He was too much for sea. Given this, probably he was a she. I can't picture her face with any sense or accuracy, nor can I see my cousin's expression when he witnessed her massive form. I can only see what used to be, the beach free of whale the whale in the sea. I cannot seem to stretch enough anymore to witness in some magical land a scene close to reality, to see the shape and size, to smell the worldly stench of her spirit drifting in the sun. And if I had been there, to watch beached sea mammal experts make their way far too slowly could I have steadied my hand long enough to write this ode, this song called The Long Hard Way to No Life? No, simply I'd stand in tonight with her dead glass eyes and my newly quaking heart, two moons overhead. Thank you. I swear I'm no slave to my government, though my government keeps telling me I'm dreaming. I know I'm not a slave to my cell phone, as I'm in the habit of leaving home without it. Nor am I a prisoner of pr propriety. My friends can attest to that. However, each morning, round about 6.30, I open the sliding porch door about six inches, allowing Kitty to slink out in her moxie aura when she delves into her peculiar rituals before circumnavigating her domain. Indeed, I myself am addicted to the daily comics where Mr. Botho shows me the world and the way it would be, if only. And I must be related to the Fusco brothers since they ask the same questions I do. Prefer getting my vicarious kicks from sports in lieu of politics. Don't I have a front row seat right here on the sofa? Feet up on the hassock, just me and my remote with Sunday afternoon football emptying all the F words from my throat. <laughs>
I'm drawn to the Celtic music loosed upon us in this Irish pub during their early evening weekly session, sipping pints of Guinness all the while. Twice a week I must stroll through the Victorian cemetery whose lake is home to the blue heron and jumbo turtles, whose statues assure me I'll be remembered. Most days you'll find me weeding my garden as fastidiously as Kitty is grooming herself on a nearby bench neath the juniper tree. I'll abide no interruptions when I'm out to sea in a Melville fable or enthralled by one of Nathaniel's haunting twice-told tales. Oh, I'm a free man, I am, I am, notwithstanding my mandatory pastimes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Death is a cloud alone in the sky with the sun. Our hearts, turning like fish in the green wave, grow quiet in its shadow. For in the word death, there is nothing to grasp, nothing to catch or claim, nothing to adapt the skill of the heart to.